What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. This is part seven of the Rebuild the Box series, the ceiling. So as you can see, everything has been taken out of the back of the box so that we can start with our new build. And one of the things that I did as well was remove all the paneling. I wanted to take some two by threes and I wanted to go along these braces here. So let's get to it. Flip this into place. Okay, so I have to be able to uh, press it up against the uh, ceiling. So, actually, what I'm going to do is uh, use these L brackets here and use some existing holes that are already in these metal ribs. Okay, and as you can see, it goes one side to another. It's really hard to tell the curvature of it, but it's curved, I promise. So anyway, I'm gonna leave those brackets on there. And when it's dry, it'll look, as you can see, these are still drying here, but it'll look like that. So, all right, I got a few more to make, and then I should be pretty much good. So let me get on that and get this all done. And I just got all of these beams in. I made a couple of other uh, things here out of uh, paneling just to hold the, hold the beams up so they can dry. Now I'm going to try to take as much of this scrap insulation that I have. I also have a couple of full sheets if I need to and try to cram as much of it into the open space in my ceiling. Alright, so we have all the insulation now in the ceiling. I used as much of the one inch insulation as I could, but wound up running out. So I wound up repurposing the green stuff, which was the thinner stuff, but I actually doubled it. So I actually had double the insulation that I had before, which I didn't even realize I only had one layer in. So I corrected that and I taped up all of the joints and everything as well just to seal it off all that much better. And this is actually all that is left from all that scrap that I had. These boxes were filled up with a lot of this one inch insulation that I used a lot of, and I still had a lot of this thinner stuff. And as you can see, I don't have very much left. So I'm gonna save some of this just in case I need it for a future project. But otherwise, let's get on to that paneling.
Okay, so I finally got all of the paneling in. Couple of things to note. First of all, I screwed up when I was cutting the first time. And so I cut this panel too short and it was supposed to be directly in the middle because that's how it is on the vent fan, directly in the middle because the one board's gonna cover that. So I'm going to have to figure out something for this here when the time comes. Moving on, I also made a mistake and I cut the opening for the vent fan here on the opposite side by accident, but that's okay because I'm actually going to be covering that up with the cabinets when I uh, go to install those after the ceiling is done. But we are not done yet. The next thing to do now is to install the one by fours. So the next thing we're gonna do is take these one by fours these are 12 footers i have 10 of these but we're only going to use eight of these and i got a bunch of these eight foot uh one by fours so we're going to cut those down to size so of course i've got it sketched out and as you can see at the top here i'm doing 15 rows of one by fours with a three inch gap in between i put a little list right here of the um, length and how many of each length that i need Alright, so I have all of the pieces cut out. Once we have our 1x4s cut down to size, I'm just using this as a sample piece. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this thinner 3 8 of an inch insulation and cut it into 2 inch strips. We're going to glue them to the center of the board and that'll create our spacing that we're going to need for when we mount these to the ceiling. And now I have all these two inch wide strips of foam cut out. So now I'm gonna take some of this Gorilla Glue original formula and we're going to glue these strips down to the one by fours so that it gives it its spacing. So these pieces here that are going to border the vent fan and these pieces here that are going to border the skylight are going to get full size pieces mounted on it to space them out so that they match up with the other pieces with the two inch strips. All right, well, I have all of these strips glued down to the one by fours there and a whole pile of them here. And actually midway through, I actually switched to this Gorilla uh, construction adhesive that I've used on other foam board projects. And so the reason why is actually because if you look at like that one right there, for example, you see how it starts to foam up and foam out. And you gotta be careful because if you let it go without realizing it, it could actually push your piece off of your project and it won't stay uh, flat against it. As you can see on the right side, it's held on with the construction adhesive. You see the little white that's coming out right there and it lays flat and it doesn't expand. So we're gonna let these dry and we'll start painting. So after I got the foam on there, I went ahead and painted the bottoms of these pieces black. I got these long ones here and a bunch of the shorter ones up here, as well as a couple of medium ones over here. We're going to take some of these LED lights and we're going to mount them to, to the boards. 
I have uh, two of these boxes, which I believe each one of these rolls is like 50 or 75 feet. Um, and then I, I don't know, I have three boxes of LED strip lighting. I have about 400 feet worth. I don't know how much I need. I think I estimated about 200, but they were on sale, so that's why I got them. I only painted the tops. I did not paint, I didn't paint the bottom where you're actually gonna see. I wanted to mount the LED strip light to this first and then flip all these over and then just paint the top. This way here, the finishing coat on the part you'll see uh, won't be messed up with fingerprints or scratches or whatever. There's different styles to get. These have uh, some kind of an app. 16 million colors, dimmable, and all sorts of funky stuff. I just really want it for white, um, maybe blue, and uh, green. So yeah, so we got these right here. I believe these are 10 millimeter wide. And if you were wondering how I was going to connect one strip to the other side, because I'm putting one on each side, I bought a bunch of these connectors that I can connect. With has These have connectors on it. They're four-wire jumpers where I can cut uh, the strip light, for example, right here. For example, right here, I can cut that, and then I could put one of these in between each of these. And so for this project, I bought 60 of these. I estimated that I'll need about 46 of them, but we'll see what happens. I'd rather have more than to need more later on. All right, and I got my first piece cut out, and both ends have the copper on it so I can put the connectors on it uh, for this piece here. The one piece that I'm going to put the main connector on, which you can see in this other roll here, the very edge where the power is going to go is actually going to be one of the long pieces that I'm going to have on the passenger side going towards my electrical box. Uh, but I'll show you guys that uh, once we get to actually installing this stuff into the truck. And you can see it's mounted to the board and so obviously you're not going to see it when you're looking at you know looking at it so it's going to shine up so i left a little bit on each side that's because of the length of the board compared to the length i had to cut the strip but we'll address this issue when we uh, mount this together and connect them together and then connect them to the rest of the panels i might have to trim off some of this foam board in order to tuck this and the jumper wire into but we'll figure that out when the time comes all right beautiful so now we just got to let this dry and we'll be able to put the connectors on and, and eventually well and then paint the other side and then we'll be able to install it so let's do all the other boards and get those done Well, I didn't record myself doing all of this LED strip on these pieces, but it took uh, quite a while. But anyway, I got all the pieces with strips on both sides. And these pieces here. And then, of course, these pieces here. So I'm going to let the glue dry, and then I'll paint the other side. All of the LED strips have dried to the underside of these boards. So we're going to flip them over and we are going to do the final coat to the other side.
all the boards are now finally painted. Now we'll let them dry and then we can install them. And first we're going to start off with the pieces for the vent fan and the pieces for the skylight. We're gonna start with the vent fan first. So I'm gonna pause right here because I wanted to show you, I don't think I did before, but I actually marked the wall where the metal beams are and then where the wooden ones are. Um, so this one is a metal one, that's wood, and then that's wood, that's metal, and that's wood. The metal ones are what is holding on the paneling. The wooden ones were meant for these one by fours. Well, there's just the start of it and already it's starting to look good i also have a white trim piece that goes around the vent fan that i got to trim up after everything is done but we'll do that at the end and next is the skylight Alright, so the vent fan and the skylight are now trimmed out. So now we can start putting in the 1x4s with the LED lights on. And so we are going to start with the center 1x4 and then work our way outward just to make sure that this ceiling stays symmetrical. And here are our first three 1x4s. I also made a sketch of each LED strip for each board of which direction they're going to be going. And I also put together where they are going to connect together. So like these little commas here at the end are where one side of the board is going to connect to the other. Much like you see on these boards here how one side connects to the other. And then on the opposite side, where you don't see the comma, is where it's going to connect to the next board, which would be, which would be on this board over here, since there's no connectors on it just yet. So this one would connect to this one and connect to the third one, and so forth. And I also have a couple of spots where I need to put three ways, just because of having the vent fan and the skylight in the way. So I'm going to need at least a three-way there, there, and there. Uh, maybe more. We'll see what happens when we get there. But first, we're going to be focusing on the center of the 1x4s, and then we're going to work our way outwards, which are going to pretty much be going here, uh, here, here, and here, something like that. Uh, I already put the piece of tape up there. Once we put the 1x4s up there, you're not really going to notice it. So... Let's uh, get the center board in and see where we're at. Okay, so I didn't show this before when I was putting these on and doing the connectors, but if you notice here and here, you see an arrow. This side here, this top here, is where we need to put connectors on to connect it to. Whoop. This is where we need to put a connector on to connect it to the next board. So this is power in, so power's gotta come in here all the way to the end, cross over to this one, and then power all the way back up here to go to the next one. So I have the center line where my two pieces of paneling meet from each side, except for my mess up, but I did measure everything out and I did make a mark right there where my center point is, so I have something to go on for that side so now i could put the first one by four in so that's the first board in and we'll continue that back here between the vent fan and the skylight and of course back behind the skylight and little things like this or 
how you can see some of the wood right there because of the screw I could always go back over that and touch it up which I probably will after I'm done with everything so I changed out those screws and I also double checked my math and instead of three inches I'm going to do two and three quarters of an inch and so what I did was I made a template out of foam board so this way here I could just stick it up like that and put the next board in and do that all the way across until we get to the walls. I've finally gotten all of the planks, all of the one by fours installed, and it took forever. The hard part wasn't putting these one by fours up, even the long ones, even though I didn't record it. The hard part was trying to wire everything up to make it all work. And I had to use various different types of connectors and such. But anyway, uh, I have the power coming in here. I'm going to put all that behind here. So when it comes to all the wiring and stuff, you're going to see some uh, stuff like that for now. I've got to hide it a little bit better. Just like up in there, you see the jumper wires. But they're pretty much tucked away for the most part. But all in all, it came out pretty good. The power comes in through here and then there's two different lines that I could use. So the one line, actually I ran it up into the ceiling there and it comes out and plugs into this one right here, which plugs into this one. And so that line there is these three uh, boards um, on its own circuit. The other one I have, it's a splitter, and I have the one going up to this board that goes down about halfway and then back. And then the other uh, side of, and then the other side I have going to, oh yeah, that's right. The one was, I already put that in there. So it's already ran through the wall. Anyway, it was a lot of figuring out, but I got it. This is a little tip for anybody who is attempting to do this type of thing with this LED strip. Just note that there are arrows that depict which direction the light actually travels. And so if you don't have them the correct way, especially if you use the three ways, like this one, as you can see, it doesn't exactly match up. So it's kind of hard to get everything to line up the way you want it to and to route it. So that's why I had to run uh, three different circuits or whatever to get everything to work. And really, it was mainly because I had to go around the vent fan and the skylight. So all of these boards here, if it was continuous, it would have been fine. But I had to power these three boards here. And then I had to power these boards back here. So I had to figure all that out. Needless to say, it is all done. So let's check it out. All right, we are in the back of the box here, and it's pitch black out. I turned all the lights out so we could see what this looks like in the dark. Ready? Whoa, that looks freaking cool, man. I'm not going to lie. That is awesome. I love it. I know on this side, I didn't have enough to go the rest of the way, but that's fine. Those first two boards at least are going to be covered by the cabinets, the foam cabinets. And it's going to be the same way on this wall here as well. And also, I'm going to be putting a cabinet here. So all those wires and the spaces and stuff like that is not going to be a big deal. But this looks, uh, this looks amazing. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. You could do this in a van, your house, wherever. Give it a try. Like, share, subscribe. Drop your thoughts and comments down below. I appreciate all the love and support. And we'll see you next time.
going for a car ride.